Well hello, it's Cliff here from Down Under. In this video I'm going to talk about tapping difficult threads and how to avoid tap breakage. I'll put a link in the description below to other videos that I've done on tapping. The two main causes of tap breakage are tap alignment and tap sharpness. And uh, this video will go into tap alignment of very small threads and how you can avoid breaking those tiny little taps. And in the other videos I'll link, I'll go into tap sharpness, how you can easily sharpen your blunt taps. All right, I'll get on with it. Cheers. So this is the key secret for tapping very small threads, is that you use a bush on the shank of the tap to align it axially in the right position. And you use a special type of circular wrench, tap wrench, that only puts torque into the tap. And there's no chance of axial deflection or angular deflection. And they are the killers. They are what break taps 9 times out of 10. I'll just show it to you in application. This is a 2mm example, an M2. And this is a 1mm example, an M1, with a much smaller tap wrench. So to set the part up in your milling machine, you probably do it in a CNC machine. Um, if that's all you've got, you'd use a probe to set up your part. Um, you could also use a probe or an edge finder in a manual milling machine. I've been developing this prototype attachment for the Hallmark ITTP which is uh, converts it from a CNC probe into a manual probe and the great thing about this as an edge finder is that it's very quick to dial it in concentric this ITTP is designed to be very quick and easy to dial in concentric I've got a dial indicator on there now we just put a key in the adjusting screw Dial it in, and there we are, we're within a hundredth of a millimeter, as quick as that. So if you have a little bit of run out in your chuck, you can very quickly dial it in. Now we can set up our part work offsets very quickly and easily using the digital readout in manual mode. Touch one side, index over, touch the other side, split the difference, and we have the center in the X. And for example, in this case, I want to set up the Y based off a surface or an edge. So I just come into contact, enter zero on the DRO, and then index in the radius of the stylus tip, two millimeters. Now I'm on Y0. So as you probably know, when we're starting with a long, thin, flexible drill, for example, this two millimeter metric thread is a 1.6 drill, we need to start with a uh, spotting dimple exactly in the right place so the drill will find center and not wander off when it starts. So we can machine that starting dimple for the long flexible tapping drill with that single lip debit cutter and also use it to produce the chamfer at the top of the thread. There's a closer look at the spotting tool that I'm using. So it's just a single lip engraving tool or D-bit engraving tool, a 45 degree chamfer. It's really good for this type of application. So you can see there that that type of spotting tool also produces the chamfer and a nice accurate position and guidance for a tap. 
So let's show it an application. So because we just machined the dimples with the spotting tool, the chuck is aligned over the center line of the hole. We put that little guidance bush in the chuck and that's a location fit on the shank of the tap. And so that lines it all up. So there's no real skill required now. Cutting oil on there and we can just screw it down using a finger and a thumb on one hand. And you can very easily feel when the tap bottoms out and uh, you're highly unlikely to break a very small tap like this because you're just applying torque. You're not trying to align it as well. Okay, let's have a close-up look at those parts. So there's your little brass guide bush. The uh, hole is the size of the shank. Then there's your little wrench. You just make up a little disc and knurl it on the outside. It could have a V shape filed in there if you want to get really fussy. Um, your tap. I won't get into all the different types of taps. As a rule of thumb, uh, for hand tapping like that, a number two tap is probably the best choice, an intermediate or a gun tap, a spiral. They take the least torque to get started and a uh, bit of cutting oil on it and um, you can feel when it bottoms with this type of wrench. You need a proportionately smaller type of knurl disc wrench for a smaller tap like this one millimeter tap. But the idea is um, you're only applying torque and uh, you're very unlikely to break your tap. If you want to tap down to a blind thread after you've tapped down with your secondary or intermediate tap or your spiral untap, put a bit of kerosene in the hole, blow it out with compressed air, put some cutting oil in there, put your bottoming tap in, very carefully get it started. Remember you're only floating it in that little sliding bush and cut the little bottom part of the thread out, that's the safest way to do that as well. When you're actually doing the tapping, you might find you can turn the tap with this little wrench, perhaps two turns, and then you feel the torque increasing uh, well before you get to the break point. Back the tap off, turn it anti-clockwise for a couple of turns, and then come back down again. It'll be easier to turn now that the chip has been broken, turn it down another one or two turns until you feel the torque starting to go up. And that way, you're not getting anywhere near the breaking point of the tap. You're backing off before that happens. It becomes increasingly difficult when you're tapping very tough steels, certain types of high tensile and stainless steels and very coarse threaded taps for their diameter. The chances of breaking goes up. So you want to use a high grade of cutting oil and be very sensitive. Make sure your tap is very sharp. Have a look at my earlier videos on how you can sharpen a dull tap and make it as good as new very easily. And um, you've got to be careful with uh, some stainless steels and pre-hardened steels uh, that you don't overload the tap and have a meltdown moment. And there we are, very small threads with very low stress and very low risk. It's worth spending a little bit of time to make these tools and become familiar with the procedure so that you can do this work in the future uh, and be relaxed and avoid the stress of it all. It's a good idea to have all your really small taps and dies in a separate kit. For example, anything smaller than three millimeters or say one eighth of an inch you could consider small and fragile and requires very much more care. Here I've put everything below three millimeters in this kit so that you've got all the various tools on hand. Here I've got the guide bushes for the different tap shanks and the different knurled wrenches and uh, I've got a floating holder that holds the dies as well. If I'm doing uh, threading work in the lathe, I can control the alignment there. And you make a few notes as you do it, as you learn better procedures. For example, I did some tricky material and tested different types of taps. I tried uh, Chinese taps that I bought from AliExpress. They look like quite good quality. 
but uh, with a 1.6 pilot drill, the torque was high, and it, I felt it was on the point of breaking. I tried a Warwick tap, a second, and it was less torque, but still medium. I tried a Sutton tap, a second intermediate tap, and that was the best. So you make these little notes so that in the future you know the grade, the type, the brand, and so these little details. Perhaps I should just, you can pause the screen and have a look at these details if you like. Might save you a disaster one day. So this type of edge finder, I'm not sure if it's a product that will be in demand or not. Let me know in the comments below if you're interested. It has some real advantages over a normal edge finder in that it can be dialed in concentric. It has a, a long reach. It can get down into hard to get at places and it doesn't rely on the work being uh, electrically conductive. You could use it on plastic parts because it's using mechanical switching inside the probe. Well, I've got your attention on the Hallmark probe, in case you're not aware. It's available in different formats now. It's available as the Pro, which is a fully hard anodized body, and it's unpluggable. So that's handy for dialing it in quickly without wrapping the cable around it, and it's a little bit easier to manage. Um, it's also still available in the standard format, which is the same internally, and it's available with a TTS shank or a 12mm shank. So uh, just, just checking that you're aware of those different formats for the Hallmark ITTP probe. Another advantage of the Unpluggable Pro is that, is that you can leave the cable plugged in and the machine circuit is not on and uh, the uh, plug can be set up on a little hook like that pointing away from the coolant so that it doesn't get contaminated. So it's a little bit of an advantage with an unpluggable probe. Thanks for watching guys. If you found that content helpful, don't forget to subscribe, etc, etc. Catch you next time. Cheers. Mm -hmm.